All right. Well, hello, everybody, and uh, happy afternoon to all of you there out in the virtual world. Um, I would like to thank you for taking the opportunity and the time to join us to uh, impart some good information. My name's Chad Shipman. I'm the vice president of sales on the credit union side for Arch a Mortgage Insurance Company. And uh, as most of you know, if you don't know now, at Arch, we pride ourselves in bringing uh, some educational topics to our customers to help you guys expand your knowledge base, not just only from a mortgage insurance perspective, but from a uh, general uh, industry knowledge base as well. So uh, it is definitely my pleasure today to let you know, uh, let's step back, we are recording this. So I know a lot of you are, are logging in right now and getting set up. So this will be recorded. You will have the recording available to you after afterwards. But um, it is my pleasure to go ahead and introduce Ginger Bell to everybody, an uh, industry expert. I know several of us have sat through plenty of webinars <laughs> over the years with Ginger and uh, gotten some, some expertise from her. So uh, Ginger Bell, she is an established figure in the world of AI, all the rage these days and educational marketing. She's renowned for a dynamic blend of innovation and expertise. She's a 15-time best-selling author and award-winning producer. And you can see many of Ginger's accomplishments right up there on your screen. Um, Ginger's role as the founder and CEO of Edu Marketing has positioned her as a key influencer in merging educational content and marketing strategy strategies. Her initiatives in the AI space underscore her commitment to empowering professionals with cutting edge knowledge and tools. So I, for one, um, I'm old enough to remember the days of the old Oregon Trail when it came to, uh, <laughs> to, to our screen as young kids and playing that on the original Apple. So uh, I love it. Our world is, our world has changed tremendously. So uh I, I'm, I, for one, am uh, all in to see what we can learn and, and hear in, in the world of AI. So, so Ginger, I will uh, turn it over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Chad. And of course, thank you, ArchMI, for the opportunity to share this information. I've had the pleasure and privilege of working with ArchMI throughout the years. So we've done uh, a lot of training on uh, AI, on video marketing, on TRID on all the regulations. And so a wonderful partner uh, to so many in the industry. And of course, thank you for all of you who are joining. So I am actually going to drop off of my video because I have a lot of content that I am going to be sharing and I want to concentrate on the screen. And so I wanna make sure that everyone can see my screen. So if you can type into the chat box um, and let me know, you can either type into the chat box or you can type into the Q&A and let me know that you can see my screen. And then this is also where you're going to be typing in questions. So as we're going throughout the information today, if you do have questions, you can type it in uh, the chat box, you can type it in the Q&A box, uh, however it is that you want to communicate with me, uh, you can do that. And uh, I am putting into the chat box uh, links to the presentation as well as a handout. So we're gonna be covering a lot today. And so in the handout, I have all the links that are to the different tools that I am going to be covering throughout today. So with that, I am going to go ahead and get started. Oh, and by the way, as Chad said, we are recording. I'm gonna send a copy of the recording along with a copy of all of the handouts to you and you'll get a copy of all of that tomorrow. And so you can go back and watch it, share with a friend. If you need to hop off, then you can do that. So I want you to, knew, to know that as well. And then the last thing I'll mention here, I'll mention it again um, at the end. I did put together a survey 
at the end. It'll pop up when you hop off of the, the webinar. It'll also show up in an email tomorrow. If you wouldn't mind, just take a couple of seconds. There's four questions in there and answer that survey because we want to know, um, first of all, uh, obviously, if you're getting value out of the information that I'm covering. And then the second thing is, what are some additional topics you'd like to know about? And so as we're just getting into this world of AI, uh, we want to know where are your questions? What do you want to know? What do you want to learn um, on all of those? So I would really uh, appreciate it if you would just take a quick second when you get that and answer that. Okay, I'm going to say we're going to age ourselves a little bit here. So how many of you, you can type into the chat, um, remember when Burger King began accepting credit cards. Does anyone remember that by any chance at all? I'm saying no. <laughs> okay. Maybe it wasn't a big thing, but it was big enough that the news stations were reporting on it. All right. Let me see. What will it be? We're here to go. Um, Would you like ketchup on that? Well, uh, large or small fry? <sighs> Cash or credit? What? The home of the Whopper is offering cash or credit. I think it's pretty bad if you have to use a credit card when you go to a fast food restaurant for something as little as $3.10. If I use my GM card, I get a 5% rebate. Yeah, thank you. If I eat here long enough, I'll be able to buy a pickup truck. Burger King bosses say workers won't have to figure out how much change the customer gets back. I just hope it doesn't slow things down at the cash cash and carry that people are going to be having to call New York and get get the uh, confirmation or, you know, whatever it is, because when I want a Whopper, I want it now. Just another way to spend money. I'm sure it'll work for people on vacation when they don't have to do something, but I can't imagine it working on a day-to-day -day basis here. So far, the smallest credit has been for $2.50, the largest just over 10 Jamie Costello, News Channel 2. How crazy is that? And I love that. He said, hey, I don't see this taking off. And you think about it, how many different places have you used your credit card, uh, your Apple Pay, all of those things? Uh, where are you using that at? And look at all of the other things as far as services that we have available today all of the changes that we've seen in our lifetime and what kind of an impact that it has had on us. From Microsoft, founded in 1975, Apple. You know, Apple went from the Macintosh to the iPhone. And then Google, obviously, everything that they have done between Google Maps, Google Drive, the Android, YouTube, and Amazon, my gosh, how many times are you on Amazon? There's so many changes that we have seen in our lifetime. And now we are sitting at one of the biggest changes in history, and it is the AI revolution. And as we stand here on the cusp of the AI revolution, we're a little over a year and a half into this. We're witnessing the birth of companies and technologies that promise to be as transformative as Microsoft or Apple were in the tech revolution. Artificial intelligence or AI is poised to redefine a myriad of industries from healthcare to finance to transportation and education. So there's companies like OpenAI, DeepMind, and Tesla who are pushing the boundaries of what machines can do. From natural language understanding, which is what we are really getting involved in with AI, to autonomous driving. This revolution is just not about technology. It's about fundamentally changing how we live, how we work, how we interact with the world around us. And so it's a matter of ushering in a new era of innovation and growth. But what are the experts really saying about AI? So I pulled this clip from uh, one of my mentors, Gary Vaynerchuk. If you are not using AI tools every day of your life, you're making a huge mistake. You've got to start training. Whether you need it or not is irrelevant. You're gonna need it and you're gonna interact with it every day. So the faster you're good at it, remember when you met executives 
20 years ago, 10 years ago, that still don't even use email and they have their like secretary print out the email, like when it felt so weird, that's how not using AI will feel. Pretty big. And we're just at the very beginning. It's the tip of the iceberg. And so as we get into this, what we see today, it's just a glimpse of what's to come. And right now, the potential for growth and transformation is immense. And the applications are virtually limitless. But there's also some pitfalls. So one of the things is, hey, everyone can use it. So it's a matter of, is it something that's going to help you stand out? It doesn't sound like you. And we're going to talk about some ways to have it sound like you. It also lacks your expertise. And if you've used ChatGPT, type in the chat. Let me know how many of you have started using AI, even if it's just hopping into ChatGPT and playing around with that. And if you've done that, and I've had a lot of uh, people that I've talked to say, it just doesn't sound like me. It just sounds, um, it sounds too formal or it doesn't have the expertise. I can also give false information. So you have to be very careful about that. And so one of the things that you have to understand is it doesn't sound like you because you haven't trained it. You haven't told it who you are. It doesn't have shared your expertise. And so I want you to think about being able to use, especially ChatGPT, as if you are hiring an assistant and you have to tell them that information. And we're going to talk about some of the things that you can do throughout the presentation today. So why does all of this matter, especially as far as the information and not accurate information? Obviously, in, in our industries, in mortgage lending, real estate, it's important that the information is accurate. It can erode your trust, you've built with your clients, you can even have some legal implications. So you do want to make sure that you do check your facts. Always double check the information generated by AI, whether it's you're using it for data analysis, for customer insight, or even simple facts. And so that human layer, layer verification is very important. So that's just a little disclaimer there. It's not always 100% accurate. So you do want to check it. So what is AI's roles? So it can be a powerful tool for generating content. It can be a powerful tool for automating tasks, but it doesn't replace human expertise. And I think that's the most important thing. If you've you know been watching and following, it's like, oh my gosh, it's going to replace everything that we do. In my opinion, I do not feel so at all. In fact, I just got off a podcast that I did uh, for real estate agents talking about AI and its effect in their business. And I think that AI is going to really help you to streamline some of your processes, but also if you leverage it to stand out and show your value. And I think we will see that connection and that one-on-one -on -one become more important now with AI than it was before. And so that is my, my position on that, has a very powerful role. It's important for you to learn how to become a part of this revolution. So it means accepting it, adopting it, becoming a part of it, learning it. How can you use it? How can you leverage it? And that's important to be able to say, where can I use it? And be smart about it because... There's a lot of tools out there. I'm going to share some tools with you today. So you're going to use some of them. You're not going to use all of them. And so I recommend limit yourself as far as how much time you're spending on, you know, playing around with this every day and find the tools that really can work in your business to help you and then explore. So that's an important thing to be able to remember with that. So I'm going to launch just a quick little poll here because I want to get an idea before we get into the the meat and the potatoes of this is how excited are you guys for AI on a scale of one to 10? Are you very excited? Or are you like not at all excited? So t one being not at all excited, 10 being over the moon excited. And then of course, somewhere in the middle, I can tell you when I 
first heard about ChatGPT, and I've been using AI in my business for a long time. Um, I do a lot of content development. We do a lot of copywriting um, for books and blogs and videos. And so I used Jasper for years, and Jasper had an AI element built into it. So when OpenAI came along, it was something that I was already very familiar with using. But what OpenAI did is it, it exploded because it is an open source to where now others can come in and tap into that. And that's really why you're seeing this huge change. Okay, so I'm going to share with you, and it's mixed, very interesting. So we are at uh, 4% that not excited 2% are number two, 4%, three, uh, 7% is at a four. And so we've got all the way up to, it looks like our highest is about an eight. So that's good, about an eight. And as you start getting into these tools, you'll get more excited because like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it can do that. And then that's where you, you'll see a lot of your excitement really coming along. So for those of you who are not so excited, I get it. You're busy. So sometimes it can be a distraction, but start playing around with it. Start paying attention. And obviously you're doing that because that's why you're here on this webinar with me. Okay, so let's talk about some of the ways that you can use AI in your business. It can be used to generate leads. You can use it in your email campaigns. And there are some systems that have an AI overlay that you can use it to answer emails. You can use it to send emails. You can use it with your chatbots. You can also create uh, social media posts. I'm going to go through some of those today. Some videos. I have some technology we're going to talk about with that. You can have it help you create viral content, some SEO, help you with that, help you create blogs, which I know a lot of you are not writing blogs, so it's a great way to be able to do that. You can create six-month plans, 12-month plans, one-month plans, but it can help you on your plannings. Obviously, all your social media can help you with that, whether it's your reels or your ads. You can actually create an AI content team. You can create an AI sales team. You can do um, audits, proposals, customer follow-up. It's a great way that I know a lot of people are using it. You can do um, analytics. You can do website and landing pages. Um, in fact, we just made an entire website all through AI. And it was amazing. You can do chats, customer support, it can help you with your appointment setting. Um, it can also be an AI assistant to help some with uh, human resources like spreadsheets and operations, finances. I mean, really, it's absolutely amazing the things that you can use AI in your business. What I recommend is to start with one. And the first thing to start with is really become good at prompting. Prompting is what you do when you put your question or your instructions or you want whatever you want, ChatGPT or Gemini or Google Bard. Those are some of the different platforms that are out there that you can use. But prompting is very important. And so in order to help you learn how to prompt, I created a, a newsletter. It's called the Daily AI Buzz. And what I do is I just give you a prompt of the day. It's one prompt. I do a prompt. I do a technology recommendation. And the idea is just to get you into the habit of seeing what a good prompting looks like. Because it's one of those things. It's like if you had a genie in a bottle and you had three wishes, what would you ask for? And more specifically, what you would ask for, would you get what you want. And just so you know, I generated this image in ChatGPT in Dolly. And so I use this as an example. If you had a genie in a bottle and you said, I wish to fly, you could end up with a lot of different variations. You know, you could be uh, an airplane, you could be a bird, <laughs> you could be whatever. And it's just like in prompting, the more specific and the more details that you put into your prompt, the better response you're going to get. And again, this image I generated through Dolly. So let's talk about some of the best practices for writing prompts. The first thing is be specific. 
So you want to make sure that you are stating very clear requirements of what you want in your response. The next thing is use step-by-step -step instructions. If you are inputting something that is a complex prompt into smaller prompts, then it can help ChatGPT to understand specifically what you need. Um, and so I'm saying, Rosie, uh, the next is set your desired format, specify the preferred format or style for answers. So let it know what kind of format that you want. I'm going to show you some examples what that looks like. And then also, and this goes back to making sure to verify that the information is accurate. You can ask for the sources. So if you are, say, for example, asking for ChatGPT create a social media post about the qualification requirements for uh, getting mortgage insurance on a loan. And so what it's going to give you, it may or may not be right. And so you wanted to set to ask for where it received this information because it's searching for that information and you want to make sure that it's searching for accurate information. The next thing is let it know what your response length is. And sometimes it's good about giving it to you. I know I was looking for, I wanted to have, um, we're working on a, a leadership book with leadership um, leaders throughout the, the mortgage industry. And I wanted to have just 200 words. That would all, that was all that was going to fit into this part of the website was 200 words. And I asked it probably four different times to cut it down to 200 words. So it doesn't always do exactly what you want, but the better you get at it, then letting it know initially what you want is important. The next thing is refine your prompts, try different phrasings um, and try different wording. And that's, that's the thing. If it doesn't give you exactly what you want, sometimes you can just type in, um, I would like for you to uh, to write a prompt on how to create uh, a social media post for first time home buyers. And it will tell you how to write the prompt. So sometimes just getting it involved in it is it important to be able to do that too. And then finally, your roles and your tones. So ChatGPT can take on various roles and various tones. It can act as a variety of different um, personas and that can do a variety of activities. And it's set up in your custom GPTs. I'm gonna show you where that is and what that looks like. So those are the, the overall best practices. I like to just put it into something that is easier to remember. So uh, it's called the ATM method. And A is for act. How do you want it to act? T is for tell. Tell it exactly what you want. And then M is the message. And so if we break this apart, then we say act. So when you're putting together a prompt, how do you want ChatGPT to act? And so if you think of the type of transaction at ATM, whether you are depositing money or withdrawing money, you're going to tell it, hey, this is what I'm doing. The same thing with ChatGPT. You're going to define the role that you want it to take. You could say you're going to be acting as a loan officer. You're going to be acting as a marketing manager. You could be acting as a operations manager. But for it to have an idea on what information to give you, it needs to know how am I acting as? What does that look like? And then the next thing, the tell is, and think again of the ATM, specify the transaction details. So think of it as the withdrawal amount, how much you're taking out. And so it's like specifying the transaction details. And here you're directing chat GPT on the specific task or information you seek. And that helps to create the scope of the response. And then finally, the message. So think of it as choosing the note denominations of an ATM. So let's say we're going in, we want it to act as a loan officer. 
And so we're going to give it very specific directions as far as what we want it to give us. And then we're going to determine the format, the style that you receive the information, whether it's a bulleted point, whether it's a formal report, whether you want it written in um, you know, the level of an eighth grader, all of those things. How do you want that message to look? So those are some really good rules to use when you are uh, putting together your prompting. So let's look at a couple of examples here. And I put this one together, act as a mortgage loan officer and create a compelling Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn post about avoiding common mistakes when buying a property. So I'm going to actually launch this up here. And I recorded this, put this into ChatGPT. So here we have, whoops, um, sorry, I was hitting a button to go in and check on our chat. So I'm going to go back here. Okay. So here we go. So act as a mortgage loan officer. And with this, what we're going to do is we're asking it to make three separate posts. And from that, it's giving this to us. So we want three separate posts. So it's giving us the Instagram post, the Facebook post, and um, the third post. So I'm sorry, this is acting up today. So we want um, three separate posts. I'm going to start this up again. So once you put that in there. So again, we want to act as a mortgage loan officer. We want it to give common mistakes and we want it to make three separate posts. So here we have the Facebook post that it's doing. We have the Instagram post that it's doing. And then we should have a LinkedIn post after that that it's doing. So it's going to give you exactly what it is. There it is. Um, to that. The reason I had it at, to put together three different posts is because I want three different audiences to have information in three different ways. And so you can see by just putting in one simple prompt, now it's giving us that information that we want. The next example is we wanted to act as a realtor specializing in luxury residential properties, develop a highly effective referral program, targeting high net worth individuals to increase client referrals and boost sales growth. So I'm telling it how it's going to act, who I'm targeting. And so it's going to put information that's going to be specific to that audience. And then I'm giving it the why. So the why in this is to increase, increase client referrals and to boost sales. And so when you get that in there and you get more specific about what you're asking for, what it's doing is first thing it is, it's giving us um, what we can do. So the first thing is to define the target audience. So it's telling us exactly what we can do for marketing. It's telling us to create exclusive benefits, to offer high value incentives that appeal to them. It's talking about personalized communication, which is important. So it's talking about art gallery openings. It's also sharing leverage technology. And then it talks in training and empowerment, it also brings in ideas as far as con continuously improving that and then talking about other additional marketing and promotion things you can do as far as referral programs. So all of these are great ideas and we asked it just to create um, a marketing campaign for that. It came up with eight different things and some of those probably we would have never thought of. So the difference in this, I'm putting asked as a professional copywriter and proofreader. So I wanted to think just as someone who is writing special ad copy. So it's going to put on a different hat than it did when it was a loan officer. And so the focus is, I'm telling, is to help a realtor specializing in luxury beachfront properties in Miami, Florida, to brainstorm unique ideas for creating a direct mail piece to target affluent buyers who are interested in investing in waterfront real estate, provide suggestions to make the mail piece stand out and grab their attention. So these are things, and if you guys if you think about if you want to have build relationships with other real estate agents, being able to use ChatGPT to say, 
hey, you know, let's put together some marketing um, pieces to help market some properties that you have listed. Take it to a listing agent because what it's going to do is going to give you those ideas. So here we've got high quality oversized postcards, personalized packaging, interactive elements. We've got 3D um, lectures. Lect and I've never even heard of that prints. So showing different images that has scented elements, um, luxury property lookbooks. That's a great idea. Invitation to an exclusive event, the use of augmented reality, and then handwritten notes. All of these things are ideas. And the difference is this is going to be different than what you would do for what a first time home buyer. So because we've gotten very specific as to who the target is and how we want them to act, it has given us different information. So, um, oh, so I'm asking, so we've got a couple of questions I'm gonna get to. So Sean's asking, how did you get the marketing in front of the GPT in the right-hand corner? So I'm gonna show you that, and that's how you have a custom GPT. So I'm gonna show you that great question. And we're gonna get into that actually right now. So good segue, Sean. So let's talk about your custom GPTs. So if you've been playing around with ChatGPT, you may be on the free version. I highly recommend that you get onto the paid version. It's $20 and there's, it's $20 a month. And there's so many additional things you can do. So what I'm gonna to show to you right now is what it looks like to get into those custom GPTs. Because once you start doing that, then you're going to be able to really refine more of what you're doing. So showing here, this is in ChatGPT 4.0, and they actually just did a new release on the ChatGPT 4.0, but this is in what they call their GPTs. And as you go through here, you can see there's a variety of GPTs that you can connect with. If you have been playing around with ChatGPT for a while, this used to be plugins. And when they introduced their GPTs, they changed the plugins to GPTs. So here is the Canva GPT. So how many of you use Canva? And you can just type in the chat, let me know. Um, so Canva has a built-in GPT. And so when you start in ChatGPT, you can put your prompt in. And here I said to make a creative ChatGPT post or a, a post for a beautiful sunset. And so here it did that. And then when you do that, you just open it in ChatGPT into Canva and then you can customize it. And so now I'm going to, I'm actually gonna back this up just a little bit if I can, um, cause it kind of got ahead a little bit. I was talking too slow. Okay, so let's go back to, here you are in ChatGPT4. And here are all of the different GPTs you can use. And you can see there's research, there's programming, there's marketing, there's PowerPoints, there's websites, there's a ton of different things. But I'm going to show you Canva. So you click on the Canva GPT. And again, this is in 4.0. And then you click on, they have some posts in there for prompts. You can put whatever prompt in there you want. I just clicked one they had. And this is about creating a social media post about a sunset. And so what it's going to do is now it's going to connect with Canva and it's going to create that social media post. And then you click on the post, you have to connect your Canva to your chat GPT. But then once you do that, then you can go in and you can edit that post. The next thing I'm showing you here is the custom GPT. So you click on my GPT and here you see all of the different names of the GPTs that I have in my chat GPT. And here I'm using this example here, which is, um, I've named it Rick Best. So this is where you can go in and you can customize what you want your GPT to have. So it has, you can put all of your information in there. You can put your website in there. You can put your hashtags in there and you can put 
all of your conversation starters in here so you can set up your own prompts that you regularly use. You can also upload knowledge here. And so here I have the lenders, um, VA lenders handbook. You can put in your own guides and everything. But what you do once you set up this custom GPT, all you have to do is just click on the prompts that you set up. And so here I'm showing you an example and I'm gonna give you this prompt. This is a weekly video marketing prompt. And in this prompt, I'm asking it, ChatGPT, to create my weekly content, my marketing content. And what it does then is it goes through the steps on this as far as everything in there. And, whoops, I moved it back too far. And so what it does is it goes in and from the prompts that you put in there, it will start creating all of your marketing. And so I'm gonna go back through this in just a second. I apologize, my, my screen is not working well with the videos today, but it doesn't hurt for you to see this over again. So we're gonna go back in. Um, so Isaiah's asking, um, do you need the paid version of Canva to edit it as well? Uh, there is a free version, and I don't know, Isaiah, if you can use that with um, ChatGPT, um, but you may need the paid. It's not very much. It's like $19 a month, I think, so you can check on that. Um, as far as Jenna, you're asking, we must have the paid version of chat, B chat GPT to do this. Yes. As of the recording, as of this time, yes, you have to have the paid version of chat GPT in order to do this. And so let's go back in here again. We're going to click on explore our chat GPTs. We're going to click on my GPT and we're going to click on what I've created. So you can have as many different GPTs as you want. And what you do when you set this up is you name it, you give it a description, and then you can put instructions in there. So you can see here the instructions that I want it to include. This is an example for one if you're doing a podcast, your social media, but you can see all of the licensing information is in there. Everything is in there. And so you can set up your conversation starters. So you can have video marketing, social media marketing. You can, I have a, a buyer broker agreement in there. You can brainstorm other ideas. And then once you set this up, these are your prompts. So all you have to do in this example is the weekly video marketing prompt. I hit that once and now it's gonna come back and it say, hey, that's great. Could you please let me know how you how long you want the first topic to be? And say it says, I want it under a minute. So that's great. So it says, we're going to do that. Now what it's doing, it's creating a video script for me for um, buying a first time home buyer. And I want it in a minute. So it's making it short script. You can set it up however you want. And then all you need to do when you set up a prompt like this is then type in next and it moves on to the next thing. So the first thing we do is we have it create a video script. And once you record that video, you're going to put it onto YouTube. So now you want to make a YouTube description. And because we set this up as a custom GPT, what does it have in there? It has, and this is just an example of Rick Best. So it has all of your information, it has your phone number in it, has your website in it, has your email in it, has all of your um, social media channels. It has your licensing information, has your hashtags in it. That's the power of the custom GPTs because you don't have to keep putting it in there. And that's one of the biggest challenges that people have when they get started with this. It's like, yeah, it's given me a little bit of information, but not a lot of information. Guys, it will give you a lot of information, but you have to set up the custom GPTs with all of your information and then it'll include that. It'll do whatever you tell it to do, but the power is setting it up in those custom GPTs. So as you can see, I am not doing anything else. It is going through this checklist and I've given it everything that I want it to create for my marketing for the week, including the call to action. 
And then it says, are you ready for the next item? And I said, so part of it is making a graphic. It'll make the graphic for you. Um, and then the next item is it's going to write an email newsletter. And so based on that one topic, this one's pulling a topic for a newsletter. And so you can have everything set up. So it'll do all of your marketing content. Now you still need to post it onto social media. You still need to record your video. You still need to put it into your newsletter. But I really think as this progresses, there will be additional tools where it'll automatically link to that. So that's an overview of um, one of those um, marketing prompts. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So I showed you the video, but this is that prompt. And so in this weekly video marketing prompt, what I set up in ChatGPT is to develop my marketing content for this week. And then I instructed it, I will give you the topic in the next prompt. Once you receive that topic, then I want you to proceed with the items listed. And I want you to include my licensing and contact information in all items except the video scripts because we don't need that. And then here's the information. So you can put it in here. It's also going to pull from everything you put into your custom GPT. And then I've given it instructions to say, I want you to begin with the first item. And once I review the information you give me and approve it, I will type in next. And you can proceed to creating content for the next item on the list. And then I gave it that whole list. So here's the list of everything that I asked for. The first thing is a video script. So create a video script for the topic, include a catchy opening and include an introduction to me. The script should be informative and engaging and be easy to understand. I do not need any direction or narrators in the script. Now I put that in there because if you ask ChatGPT to write a script, it will give you opening scene, cut to person sitting at a desk, and then it'll give you bring up, you know, funky music. I don't want that. I just want a script. So that's why I put that information in there. Remember, we're being very specific and you can give it very specific directions. I only want what I'll be reading in the teleprompter, include a call to action at the end of the script. Then the second thing after it gives me the script is I ask it to write what? A YouTube description. So create the YouTube description for the video. I want the description to include a catchy headline and at least 500 words. Remember, I'm telling it, this is what the output is that I want. And then I want you to include hashtags. The third thing is, and this is again, our video, our marketing for the week, include a social media post for the video. So create a social media post for there are for three videos, for and sometimes we do it with three videos because I like to bookend videos. I want to include a, sh a short, catchy headline. And then we've asked it to include the two social graphics. So in addition to the video, it's going to create the social graphics. And then I want it to include a blog post. For those of you who aren't blogging, start blogging. Get a blog on your website. Blog onto LinkedIn. That's going to be very, very important, especially as AI takes off more and more, because we're already seeing ChatGPT becoming a search engine. And so the more content that you have out there that is from you that you've written is critical right now. And so doing a blog post, doing videos, all of those things are very important. But you can get it to, you can get ChatGPT to give all of this. Um, and then finally, the email newsletter. So we're asking it to write a newsletter that includes one of my videos as well as information that relates to the topic. Okay, so I'm going to hop over to some questions because I'm seeing some questions over here. So Chelsea's asking, where is it getting the information from it's providing? Are you, are, are you telling it what to say? So that's the crazy thing about it, Chelsea. It's getting the information from two different places. So first of all, ChatGPT, it is pulling information that is from the internet, from what they've loaded into ChatGPT. It's uh, a, a language model that is, um, and that's a GPT as a generative pre-trained transformer. It's a program that has been fed 
a lot of information and it pulls from all that information that it has been fed, including it's pulling from the internet now. It wasn't initially when it started. And so it has all this information that it pulls from. But in addition to that, Chelsea, you can upload your information. So that's why I showed you how to customize your GPT. So it's important to do that because then you can upload your guidelines in there and it will pull from that information as well. And so those are where you can do that. Um, okay, so Christopher is asking, are there obstacles related to protecting company proprietary processes and data? Any issues with ability to trademark, copyright trademark AI generated material? I, I don't know, Christopher, on the copyright and the trademark of AI generated material. I think that 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 is is just in the beginning stages of what that's going to happen. And so I can't give you an answer on that at all. As far as obstacles related to protecting company data, this is an open format. So if you guys put something in there, then it's going to be open. And even if you delete it, it's still going to be there. So it's important to, to keep that in mind. So Christopher, I would err on the side of caution on that. You can get... Uh, uh, a company uh, subscription to ChatGPT and then it's not open, it is closed. So you could look into maybe doing something like that. But remember that don't put any non-public information in there. Don't put customer's information in there. You know, it is an open format. And so Lonnie's asking, do I understand custom GPT saves your prompts for editing? Absolutely, it does. You're hundred percent right. Um, it does save your prompts. You can go back to them. You can build from them. You can do all of those kinds of things. Okay, so I'm going to continue on and then we'll hop back to some questions in a minute. So this is just some additional example as far as prompt topics, understanding the home buying process, a step-by-step -step guide for first-time home buyers. You can do something like that. Selling your home, what to expect, a detailed overview for selling home process, real estate market trends, could give analysis of current trends in the local market, tips for first time sellers, not just buyers, sellers, because I mean, think about it. We have a lot of sellers that they've never sold a home before. So that's a great little thing to do. Key advice for those looking to sell their home for the first time. And then number five, just some different examples, understanding real estate jargon, decoding common real estate terms and acronyms. So just some different things that you can put in there. But it's important that not just Chat GPT you can use, but there's some other things. So I want to share with you some of the other tools you can use. And I've just pulled a couple. So one that you may want to talk to your real estate agents about, and I always love having something if I'm making a phone call with some. Someone, if you're calling a real estate agent, you can say, hey, I was just on this great AI webinar with Ginger Bell and ArchMI, and they shared an AI tool that's called HomeStage. And so I'm going to do a quick little demo on that very quick. Another one I love, it's called MoveTube. It was started by industry, um, I call him legend, Frank Gray. And so <laughs> that's a great little tool. Another tool, Knowledge Coop. Um, Ken Perry just came up with Coop AI and they have all the guides loaded in there. And then a great video tool is called InVideo. And then if you want to get some new headshots, Aragon is a great tool for that. So I'm going to share with you, this is Homestage. And so this is one to share with your real estate agents. So you can, um, they have pictures of the home, not staged at all, and they can upload them into home stage and it will stage those homes. So it allows them to have uh, completed pictures to be able to put into their listings. And so pretty cool thing for that. Um, the next thing is MoveTube. So MoveTube is actually listings that are streamed on um, your Roku, your Apple, your um, Amazon, uh, the Fire Stick. <laughs> so this is the next thing as far as buyers and sellers looking at homes is actually just watching it 
uh, stream on their TV. And this actually has uh, an AI element where you can create a clone of yourself and your voice and it becomes a part of what goes out. It has email. There's just a ton of really cool things that are included in this. So great um, AI tool there. And then this one, Knowledge Coop, it's Coop AI. And what they've done is they have created a tool and uploaded, and they have connections to all of the guidelines. So Fanny, Freddie, USDA, VA, FHA. And so you can go in there and instantly search and reference guidelines. And I know uh, I just did a podcast with Ken a couple of weeks ago on this. He was showing this to me. And it's so cool because you can put in there a scenario and it'll, t it'll reference what can do it. And it'll reference in the guidelines. And I know he had some LOs that actually were able to take it to the underwriter and say, you know, hey, this is where it is, instead of having to go through all the guidelines like we normally do. So really cool thing that AI can do with that. And then in video, you can create videos just with a simple prompt and in video. I don't recommend using this for all your videos because I want to see your beautiful face in your videos, but this is a great thing you can use to augment some of the things that you're doing. And what you do is you just put in one simple prompt into in video. I've used it for a lot of our clients to create uh, videos about their areas. So like I live in Portland, Oregon, and we made a video on, you know, what people can expect moving to Portland, Oregon. So this is a great little tool to be able to create some of those videos for that. And then finally, if you're looking for some new headshots and you hate going out and getting them done, Aragon is an AI tool and you upload its um, six video, six headshots and they can you know, just be from your phone. You can have a mix of professional and from your phone. And what they do is they take the, the headshots and they create new headshots with different backgrounds and different clothing. And some of them are good. Some of them aren't so good. Some of them you end up with, I saw some comments about the six fingers with the dolly thing. Yes, sometimes that happens with AI. It's not perfect. Um, but you, it gives you some options. And I think... Um, the price on this is not huge. I think it might be $60 for a hundred photos. And so you, it's just nice to be able to have different photos to use, especially in your social media. That's not the same photo over and over and over and over again. And so that's something. Okay. And you can find all of these tools at aibeehive.com. So because I've started doing a lot of training, um, on AI, I often get emails and phone calls and messages saying, hey, what tool can do this? So I created a directory and we're always adding new technology tools to it. So save this, go back to it. It's called AIBeehive.com. It's free to go and search there. But all you have to do is just type in what kind of AI tool you are searching for. And so you can type in video and it's going to bring up all the different AI tools that are in there. Uh, and if you have recommendations, you can recommend ones that you're using. And then you can go and you can visit that website and you can check it out. So it's not an endorsement for the platforms. It's just a way for you to be able to find some of the AI tools that are out there. Okay. So best practices, give good prompts, Number one, we went through a lot of different ideas for that, and there's a ton of things you can do. Um, provide examples of your voice, content, and contacts. So let ChatGPT know about you. Get into your custom GPTs. And then always make sure, read what it gives you. Don't just take it as is and copy and paste it. And then also never put personal, private, confidential, or proprietary information into your ChatGPT. And finally, check the facts. And so I'm going to hop over to questions, but I do want to thank ArchMI for providing this information, allowing me to have the opportunity to share this information with you. 
And as I said, we do have follow-up information. I am recording this. You're going to get a copy of the recording. You're going to get a copy of the handouts. And then there is a survey at the end. So if you do um, have ideas as far as what you want in the future, this was a fast one. I know I moved fast. This was not meant to be. I wanted to give you an overview. We didn't get into the, the how-tos on this, but make sure and follow up. We have, if you go to AI Mastery Center, we do uh, a weekly live podcast. So you can hop on that. And then um, let us know what your questions are. I'm going to hop over here and see what questions we have here. Yolanda, thanks for hopping in there. Okay. Um, we've got that. Okay. So I think we got to all the questions. If you do have additional questions, you're going to get an email from me. Please let me know. And then um, just follow up with the survey and let us know if this was of value to you, um, what other things you'd like to see trading on, and then stay tuned um, as far as upcoming uh, webinars that Arch is doing. And so, Danielle, I'm seeing, is this recorded? Yes. So I, I am recording this. You'll get a copy of the recording tomorrow along with all of the handouts. So you can go back and watch that. Okay, good. Well, you guys, thank you so much. Hey, have a wonderful weekend. I know we're coming up on a long weekend. I am looking forward to it for sure. But I want to, again, thank ArchMI for the opportunity to bring you this information. And I look forward to seeing you on an upcoming webinar.